I knew I shouldn't look. In my head, I went back and forth a million, millions of times. Should I look? Could I go on without knowing? I must have thought about it for about 20 minutes, but it felt like three days. In my wildest fantasies, I just couldn't convince myself that anything good could possibly be in the, that box. But I'm just human, and, and whoever tied this to a balloon knew it. I peered cautiously into the box's depths, awaiting my good, one good eye to confirm my fetic suspicions. A several limb, an all organ, a whole fucking head leering at my askew. My heart raced as I glimpsed the contents. A thick red glue covered the bottom. Bulbous chunks providing some unwelcome death. I could feel my adrenaline kick in. I blinked confused. Some broken glass. A black metal f frame and a power cord. If I didn't know any better, I'd say someone had put a lava lamp in here and it was busted in the fall. It was a lava lamp. What? This was Penny's last gift? Wait a second. You have to weigh the balloon down to keep it from flying off. On the hunch, I began to feel my way through the lamp slug, when my fingers wrapped it around something unexpected, heavy, and smooth. It was a key. It had the Nook symbol on it. The burden of the attempted horror I had been carrying lightened an ounce. Could Penny possibly still be out there, being held captive, being tortured? Stop it. I had to focus. So this was how Penny got into the shop that night. I wondered how she managed to snag it. It had only been about a week, but seemed like a lifetime now. Screw the raft. I was taking the express route. I didn't even know how to build a raft. It really was Nook's key. It was the middle of the day, but Nook had locked up his shop tight which was suspicious because I had still hadn't seen a single resident in town. I locked it, I unlocked it, and it slid open with the familiar whoosh. Even with light shining through the windows, it was unsettling to be in Nook's store alone. My nerves were tingling at the very real possibility that I was walking into a trap. <sighs> For animal... People going to start swarming out of hidden panels to give me another beating. Something told me they wouldn't. It didn't add up. What was going on here? It didn't take me long to find the secret passage. After a few minutes of wandering around, I had the thought of push, thought to push the large green dollar sign on the cash register. A small trap door open on the floor in front of me. Predictable. A narrow ladder led into an ominous pit abyss. If it had been me instead of Penny that night, I would have probably turned around and gone back to my, talking to my G-Roids. But it wasn't the same Billy anymore. I didn't even care about escape anymore. The only thing I wanted to see... Penny, and if that was possible, I shuddered. I was going to see blood. I looked around the store and noticed that Nook had a camp lantern on sale today. Five finger discount. It was lucky it camp preloaded and it flickered on it on to woefully incident brightness setting. I looked over to the side of the opening into the murky darkness. It smelled like wet earth and rotting plants, with the sun being down outside, it was surprising to be somewhat this cold. The tunnel was short and crude at best, with roots and earthworms dying the earthening walls. My palms were clammy. I tightened the grip on my axe. I was going to see how deep this rabbit hole went. It didn't go too far. An old fear gripped me, but it was quickly replaced with new determination. I was a new Billy. I guess this was as good 
a time as any. It was just us. No hope of escape. It looked genuinely surprised to see me. I squared off with the son of the bitch. My arch nemesis, the cause of all the pain and suffering, axe trembling in my steady hands. I'll kill you. I'm not afraid of you anymore. He just stood there motionless. In my eyes, I could tell he was trying to make a decision. An emotionless moment passed between us before he replied, shoulders visibly slumping. Do it. I won't stop you. I took a step forward, waiting to, for the other sh shoe to drop. I had to be... Tr it had to be a trick, but it was now or never. I took another step and swung the unheated wrath of fury, eight-year-old fighting for his life. The unexpected left axe of... The unexpected heft of the axe carried me off balance into the tunnel wall, the blade falling short of Nook's... of biting Nook's... into Nook's leg. He dropped to the dirt, emotionless. Crimson gushed from the deep gash in his thigh, and my stomach did somersaults at the sight of drawn blood. Fuck you. Fuck you. What the hell are you doing? Come on, boy. Get it over with. No. What did you do to Penny? Where is she? Nook real realized his head heavy. Raise Nook raised his head heavy. Sweat hanging from his brow, he was clearly in excruciating pain. He began a way grin, sadness hanging from the edge of his mouth. You've been a pain in the ass since you showed up, Billy. Forget Penny, just get out of here. That key will work on the boat on the west end of the island. Please! He sighed heavily. The sight of a man laying go of whatever little he had in left. In the faint light of the dro drooped lamp, I could make out his detailed, delighted raccoon eyes staring a thousand miles away. His breathing had started to get heavy. We were we were building a resort. Half of the crew quit because of those goddamn G-roids. We offered to pay double to anyone that would stay. It wasn't long before they started to turn into animals. Stop it. Just tell me where Penny is. Did she cross? Did you eat her? Shut up, Billy. Shut up or kill me. It's your choice. Tears were starting to well up in my eyes. Tears that I thought had been lost permanently. There were over hundreds of us, helplessly turning into these abominations. When you cross, you lose your mind for a little while, Billy. Things got bad. I had to lock up KK because he was attacking people randomly. Calling it the Lord of the Flies would be an understatement. Several s separate gangs... Several separate gangs formed, and we did horrible things to each other for territory. That was a long time ago. Over time, you'll start to regain your memory, but you forget what you've done. His eyes became gloomy. He was su suddenly started, stared right at me with force that was almost tangible. I sent you those letters, Billy. I almost had an aneurysm. I choked on my strained reply. Liar. You're the leader. You're controlling everything. You just want to keep children here until they cross and then eat them. You piece of shit. I read your papers. I read your journal. Eat you. I thought you were smarter than that. What? You can't escape this island, Billy. We're a hundred miles away from the coast of Japan. This island isn't even on any maps. Oh, you're welcome to try and... I hope you make it. God knows I've tried. Look at what I've what I got for my effort. He, he he tapped his right arm against the rocky dirt wall. 
The hollow crack of plastic echoing down the tunnel. Fake arm. I couldn't... I can't believe I never noticed. But then it was hard to tell. It was plastic beneath the mattered fur he had attached to it. The first time I no noticed a slight effort in his voice. An inability to form sharp sounds. No tongue. I'm not the leader. I'm just in charge of the cells. In the early days, they used to torture the new kids, but I was able to convince them it would be easier this way. It would be easier this way. I've tried to make all of you comfortable as I could. Most of them are happy and stupid enough that they never even know what's going on, even after they cross. But sometimes we get kids like you. This couldn't be right. In another one of Nook's fuck it's another one of Fox Nook's lies. He just trying he's just trying to keep me confused. Guessing. After all this time, he could he how could he claim to be looking out for us? Trying to make our lives better? Imagine course through my veins. You're a liar. I don't believe you. Why do you pretend to be Penny? Why would you give me your own journal? Why have you been sending me mixed messages like that creepy fucking letter and then put your key in there? Look at me, Billy. Look at... Look at your face. This is what happens when you try to escape. They take something from you. The only thing I can give you is hope. Hope that there's someone out there. Didn't you notice that I did nothing but encourage you to wait longer and longer? Tried to scare you into doing something? Wouldn't let you take any action? I have to admit, I didn't predict you'd use the balloons to map the island. I never should have taken this long. It never should have taken this long. You should have crossed by now. At least then, maybe you could finally accept that you're stuck here. I sent you one last slayer to try to scare you into letting it all go and giving up. I gave you my key. On the off chance you decide to grow some balls. I wasn't lying. I didn't need it anymore. To be honest, I didn't think I'd see you down here. I was starting to lose it. Something deep in my gut told me that he wasn't lying. He was bleeding out in front of my eyes, and he didn't care. It answered some questions that had been gnar gnawing the back of my mind that I had been trying to ignore. How could a little girl like Penny have broken into Nook's house and just happened to find his private papers and journals? Why would she run back to her own cell? How could she get away with putting together a package every day? Tears were screaming down my face. Then there's no Penny. She never... She was never real? Oh, she's real, alright. He must have seen the shock on my face. He avenged... Vented his eyes and continued. Penny runs this freak show. I'm sorry, kid. I had to use her name on the lairs because I couldn't risk someone else finding the message by accident and tracking them back to me. Nobody would question a message from Penny. I'm running out of limbs. No. No. Shit. I should have told you this. Come on, get out of here. Make a run for it. You're smarter than the rest of them. I think you have a real shot. No, it's not true. I, And I can prove it. What about the end of your journal? Why would you say that you need more children? Why did you say rabbits were your favorite? A small... A smile on his lip melted away, and he groaned and shivered, almost indistinguishably. He leaned back and rested his head against the tunnel wall. wall. Listen, you're not supposed to know some things. I finally snapped. I punched him hard across the face and grabbed him by his collar, pulling his face to mine. I screamed. You think you've suffered? You think... You're a saint because you tried to make this hellhole comfortable. Fuck you, got you goddamn coward. You think I got anything left to lose, huh? Now tell me. He looked me in the eyes. The tension hung in the air like a baby ground grand piano, and there 
was a metallic thing floating in the mu musty tunnel you can almost taste. Penny was my is my wife. She was living with me on the dig site the whole time. She didn't cross over the same way the rest of us did. She never recovered. She lost her mind. Everyone is afraid of her. They do whatever she says. The things she did to some of the other animals. She skinned some of them alive and wore their he trailed off for a friction of a second. I think the can can her cancer messed with the crossing. She was terminal. The only reason I bought this place is because we wanted to live the rest of her days in comfort on a tropical paradise. This was going to make us enough money to never have to worry about her medical bills again. It was all for her. She had a full team of round-the-clock doctors we paid to keep her on the island. They all crossed too. Then something happened that surprised me more than I thought it was possible anymore. Nook began to sob. This wasn't the Nook I knew. This wasn't the Nook I wanted dead. This was a broken man named Tom. She took over the house and took over the journal and the business. She came up with a plan to get new residents. She never did anything to me, but she, she's insane. She thinks she can replace the cancerous parts of her body. The children are, she thinks, will be forever. With unexpected density, a grim flash from underneath his cloak apron. It was a knife. I covered my face with my arms, waiting for the pain. When I finally looked, Tom's body was slumped. His vacant eyes staring at me, begging for forgiveness. Tom died, unloved and alone, in the dirty hole, like an animal. What was I supposed to do now? I didn't know how long I stood there in disbelief. A thousand thoughts buzzed through my battered mind like an angry swarm of bees. Memories of these hard months of my life flashed like a slideshow behind in my behind in my burnt in my eyes. One in particular stood out. You might want you might want to limit yourself to only cutting trees that are in the way. I think it's time we finally met Penny.